Jehovah God. Je- God's name is Jehovah. It's, it's Yahweh, but uh, in English they 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 spelled it Jehovah. The best we can do from Greek or Hebrew into English is Jehovah. So we call him Jehovah God. And Jehovah told Adam that if he ate the fruit of the tree, that he would die. And it happened. And since Adam sinned against God, Adam, because of Adam, now Adam and us, we have to pay the price of that sin, which is death. We died in the spirit, which I've told you all before. We died in the spirit because of Adam disobeying God. And because we were found guilty, God said your penalty for sinning is death, meaning separated from him. But also, Jehovah God said, I pass judgment on you, but I'm a righteous and a loving God, and I'm going to help you come back to me through his son, Jesus. He says, I'm going I'm to take care of this. You, you messed up, but I'm going to fix it for you, is what he said. So because of Adam, we had a debt to pay, and the only way we could pay it was through the blood. And at first it was animal sacrifices, and then in the New Testament it came the final blood, which was Jesus, which I'm going to teach that he is Jehovah God. Now in Matthew 1.18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she, sh- she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now back up here where it says uh, the Holy Spirit. Now we know that we believe in the Trinity here, right? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Okay, the Holy Ghost, which is God, and which is Jesus. But Jesus... The Holy Trinity, is that three separate entities? No. Some people think it's three gods. It's one God. There's only one God. His form is taken in three different ways. God in heaven, and then as a man, which we'll read the scriptures about all this, and then as the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't make him one-third God over here and one-third. He is just, there's only one God, and that's it. And all three, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Jehovah, they're all one God. It's just one God. Because the Bible says there is, there's only one God. So they're not three different gods, the big God in heaven, then the little God, Jesus, and then even a smaller God, the Holy Spirit. It's all the same. And like I said before, uh, the best illustration I saw of it it is uh, water, steam, and ice. It's all water. It's all the same. They're exactly the same. And it says, and she was was conceived, her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, again, I want to say, Jesus, we know Jesus as being the Holy Spirit, right? After he died on the cross, resurrected, he came back as the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit has always been here because the Holy Spirit is Jehovah God. And these are the, these are the verses I'm going to give you tonight, showing you how all three of them are one. And that's, that's why I'm doing this, because I'm giving you lots of scriptures tonight to, to prove that. And in verse 23, it says, Behold, virgin shall be with child, and bring and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now, all these scriptures I'm going to be giving tonight, and it's you only got half in your hand of what I'm doing. I only did four pages. I got eight pages to show that Jesus is God and the Holy Spirit. So these pages that I printed out to y'all, keep them. So that way, if anybody comes to you, and it's just not Jehovah's Witnesses. If anybody comes to you that doesn't believe in the Trinity, study these, these, these uh, verses I give you. Study them. Now, some of them, they always in that, have an explanation for them. But all the scriptures I'm going to give you, I don't see how in the world they can come up with Jesus is not God. Because I'm going to give you a lot tonight. 
and it'll probably be tomorrow night also. In Genesis 1, verse 1, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Chapter 1 says God created the heavens and the earth. That's what it says, right? Psalms 33, verse 6 through 9, By the word of the Lord, the Lord right here, when you see Lord in all capital letters in the Old Testament, it's talking about Jehovah. Jehovah God. So you can easily say, by the word of the Jehovah were the heavens made, and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth, he gathered the waters and the seas together as a heap. He laid up the depths in the storehouses, let all the earth fear the Lord, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Now I'm giving you these verses to show God made the heavens and the earth, right? God made the heavens and the earth. But if we go to the New Testament, John chapter 1, verse 1 through, 1 through 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. The Him is, is the Word. And we know who the Word is, right? Because of verse 17, when it says, And the Word became flesh, so the word, the all things were made by him. It's talk, not talking about God. It's talking about Jesus here, the Word. And without him was not anything made that was made. Also, to back that up, in Hebrews chapter one, verses two and three, hath in the last days spoken unto us by his Son. God has spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heirs of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the man, of the majesty on high again it just shown that that the god i mean jesus made everything made the worlds, made the worlds. when it says worlds it's talking about the heavens also well, that's what I'm going to prove over and over and over and over. It says in, in Genesis, God made everything. God. Now I'm showing you in the, in the New Testament that Jesus, that it was done by Jesus. Also in Galatians 1. Now either, either the Bible contradicts itself very badly. Very badly. Because over here it says God did it. Now it's saying Jesus did it. You see that? Now either it's contradicting itself very badly or... Jesus is God. Those are the two ways you can take it, right? Either you can say the Bible is wrong because over here it says God and over here it says Jesus. Or you can look at it as Jesus is God. Galatians chapter 1, verse 14 through 17. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created, speaking about Jesus, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. I'm going to be shown several, not just creation, how, how in the Old Testament it says God, and then in the New Testament it says Jesus. I'm showing it through his creation, but I'm going to show it in other ways also. So the, Old Tos <clears throat> so the Old Testament says Jehovah created everything. The New Testament says Jesus created everything. Like I said, there's only, there's only two ways to take that. So we have to choose, which I, I've already taught on that. You know, Are we going to believe that this is the Word of God? The Bible that we have, that we read, are we going to believe this is the Word of God? Now, First John chapter 5. Verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. It's the Scriptures right there. That's the Word of God. Plus, that's word for word from the Scripture right there? That's right. You, just like you... What I get printed on those papers comes straight from the Bible. None of this is my wording. So how people cannot believe in the Trinity, I don't know. Because right here it says, These three are one. There's three. That's why they call it the Trinity. The word Trinity isn't in the Bible. But three. Trinity. There's three that are one. 
And right here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, it plainly says it. There's three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Do we believe the Word of God? Yeah. And it says these three are one. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness. It's talking about Jesus. For in Him, Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's talking about the Trinity. In Jesus, He has the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All three. That's what it's, this is what Colossians 2, 9 is saying. You have the Trinity, three in one. But there's only one God. There's not three gods. There's only one God. Now the Bible says we have Savior. We know we have a Savior. Well, if you read the Old Testament, Isaiah 43, 11, I, even I, am the Lord. Now this is Jehovah God speaking. And beside me there is no Savior. So God is saying, God is saying right here, that I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. So God is, said, is saying He is the Savior, God. But remember what Matthews one twenty one says: the angel, the angel of the Lord told Joseph he would have a son. And it's, and and the angel said, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Who's going to save their people from their sins? When jo when when the angel was talking to Joseph, he's talking about his son, Joseph's son, Jesus. He's saying he. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, do we have two saviors? No. There's only one savior. And up here in the Old Testament, it says God said he was the savior. Okay, and then down here it says Jesus is the savior. Right here it shows it. God said he was the savior. Jesus is saying, well not saying, but it says here that Jesus was going to be the savior. In the New Testament, it was Matthew 1, verse 21. Also in Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Again, I'm showing Jesus is the Savior. That's two verses I've shown that Jesus is the Savior. When God himself said he was the Savior in the Old Testament. Two verses in the New Testament says Jesus is the Savior. Why? Because Jesus is God. In Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by... Him doeth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of your of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Again, we're talking about Jesus. These are verses after verses that I'm showing you. God said He was the Savior. Jesus said He's the Savior. They're one. Now who do we worship? Who do you worship? In John chapter 4, verses 19 through 24, The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, Believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Now this woman he's talking to is uh, the woman that met him at the well. And she asked for water. Well, Jesus asked for water and then she asked for water. And Jesus said he was the living water. Remember I taught you that? That Jesus is the living water? Well, this is, this is that time right here. And uh, in verse 22 he says, You worship, you know not. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now right above this, right above these verses, 
Jesus is pointing out the woman's sin. Because she said uh, about her husband. And Jesus said, yes, you have a husband, but you have seven of them. Meaning she was just a, uh, a whore. She had seven husbands. Remember what I uh, on marriage that I taught you on marriage? Anytime you have intercourse with a woman, in God's eyes, you've just married that woman. And so God said, you have seven husbands. In God's eyes, when you have intercourse with another woman, that is your wife. Or vice versa. Or that is your husband. Intercourse is what makes the marriage. Not uh, getting a license. Not going in front of the church. In the Old Testament, in the time of Jesus, they didn't have all that. They had a big party. Like I said before, they had a big celebration. And the man and the woman would go to the bedroom while the party was going on. They would have sex, come out, and they would be married. So this, this, that's why God, Jesus told this woman, yeah, you're right, you're a husband, but you have seven of them. So, so the woman was, saw that Jesus must have been a prophet because he, he knew what she was doing. But right away, she got off that subject. As soon as Jesus said that, she got off the subject and, say, and she started about, talking about worship. In verse 22, he said, You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So right away, she was trying to, she took the spotlight off of her and started talking about worship. You know, y'all worship here and we worship over there. And Jesus says, and answers and says that the day is coming that it doesn't matter where you worship. Jesus said it doesn't matter where you worship. I know the Jews worship here and y'all worship there, but there's a day coming. It doesn't matter where you worship as long as you worship in truth and in spirit. That's what Jesus said. Again, in verse 22, it says, you know, he's saying, who do you worship? If you say the Son of God, like I said, you're halfway right. You do worship the Son of God. But that's not all. And that's what this teaching is going to teach. In the Old Testament, I'm going to be going back. I'm going to show Old Testament, and then I'm going to show New Testament. In the Old Testament, Jehovah was the only one who could heal leprosy in the Old Testament. God was the only one who could heal leprosy in the Old Testament. Second Kings 5.7 and it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doeth send me unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. So this, this king is saying, Am I God? He's saying, Am I God? Can I do this? What he's, being, what he's saying here, only God can do that. I'm not God. God can heal leprosy. But then in the New Testament, it says in Matthew 8, verses 2 and 3, And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, talking about Jesus, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. I'm going to be doing this a lot. Showing how God did it over here in the Old Testament. How God did it in the Old Testament. And then I'm going to show how Jesus did it in the New Testament. Also, who can forgive sin? Who can forgive sin? The Old Testament. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Now we know in the Old Testament, it was God. God, right here it says, and he will forgive their sins. So God in the Old Testament, God is the one who forgave sins. Man don't forgive sins. God forgives sins. Only God can forgive sins. Also in Mark chapter 2, verse 7, why doeth this man to speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? God is the only one who can forgive sins. And then in Luke, in the New Testament, Luke seven, forty-eight, And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Jesus said unto this woman, Thy sins are, there, are forgiven. Jesus said your, fin your sins are forgiven. Where I just read to you in the Old Testament, it was God that can forgive sins. Now we're seeing that Jesus forgive sins. Also in Matthew 9, verse 2, And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, laying on the bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. 
how I'm showing that Jesus is doing the same thing God can do. I'm giving you the Word of God, showing you this. Who's in control of the weather, the seas, the, the winds, which I've, we've talked about that, like in Jonah. Who controls the weather? Exodus 14, verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. Who did that? God did that. When Moses and uh, Israel, when he set them free from Egypt, the Red Sea, he opened the Red Sea and they walked through. Who opened that sea? It says God did. Matthew chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, this is Jesus, and then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the man marveled, saying, what manner, of the, what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the seas obey him? Talking about Jesus. Also in Luke 8.25, And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Over and over, I'm going to show this to you. Over and over, I'm going to show you, Jesus did the same thing God did. So you see how Jesus does everything that God did. In the Old Testament, in Exodus 3.14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Because Moses asked me, Who do I tell him sent me? When he goes back down the mountain to the, to the Jews. And God said, tell them, I am sent you. So what God is saying here, I am. I am what you need. Whatever you need, that's what I am. That's what God is saying. Now in the New Testament, John 18, verses 4 through 6, Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come unto him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? Now this is the night before they came in, when the night they came to arrest him. Remember? The night they came to arrest Jesus. This is what it's talking about. Who are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am. I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon as then as he had said unto them, I am. They knew what he was saying when he said, I am. As soon as he said, I am. What did it say? They went back and fell to the ground. Who did the, the soldiers. The soldiers that came to arrest him. When Jesus told them, they said, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And when he said, I am, he was saying, thing, saying the same thing God said. God said, I am. And Jesus right here is saying, I am. John, 5, uh, John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus called himself, I am. Just like God said, I am. Jesus called himself the same thing. Jesus was shown he was before Abraham. Not only did he say, I am, the same name as God. I am. That's, what, that's who you tell him who sent you. But Jesus said, I am. But also he says right here, he was before Abraham. Jesus was before Abraham. Who is the shepherd? Jesus. Well, in Psalms 23.1, the Lord... With the capital letters, meaning Jehovah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then in the New Testament, John 10, 11 says, I am, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So God is calling himself the shepherd, and Jesus is calling himself the shepherd. This is, this is what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just comparing the old with the new. And if Jesus keeps on saying the same thing that God said, if, he, if Jesus keeps doing the same thing God did, it, just, it means Jesus is God. It, it, Jesus is God. He's got to be God. He has to be God because God said, I, I am the only Savior. And then Jesus says, He is the Savior. God said He created the world, the heavens. Jesus said, He created the heavens and the earth. In the Old Testament, who's the first and the last? In Isaiah 44, 6, 
It says, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. But God is the Lord Jehovah saying he's the first and the last. Besides him there is no God. Now in Revelations 1.17, this is Jesus. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. This is not God speaking, this is Jesus speaking. Who is our Redeemer? Isaiah 47.4, this is God. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. He is our, God is saying, I am your Redeemer. He is our Redeemer. God is Jehovah, because it's capital letters. But then in Revelations 5, 9, again, speaking about Jesus, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou hast slain and hast redeemed us to God. It didn't say God redeemed us. He said, Jesus has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. So just what I'm showing here is, again, God said he was the redeemer. Now Jesus down here is, is saying he's the redeemer. Okay, so I'm giving you all these verses. This, when you have this, when you have the word of God in with you, that's what, if people want to argue with you about Jesus and God not being one, this is what you give them. If you have to carry this paper with you, carry it. But just show them, hey, well, what do you do with these? Ask them, what do you do with these verses? Every one of these verses, what are they going to do with them? What are they going to do with them? I'm serious. When you can show them, look, God said he was this, and then Jesus said the same thing. On this, on this, on this, on this, and on this. How, how can you say Jesus is not God when Jesus did exactly the same thing? And if they tell you, well, uh, it was a mistake, well, then you got to tell them. Well, then if they're like the Mormons, they carry the King James, they just carry it. The Mormons just carry the King James. That's all they do. They live out of the Book of Mormons. They just carry it for looks because they don't live by that book. They live by the Book of Mormons. That's the book they study. That's the book they live out of. Now, when they came to the house one day, I let them. Now, you're not supposed to let them in. Do not let them. The Bible plainly says, the Lord says, if anybody comes to you with another gospel, don't let them in the door. That's the word of God. Don't let them in the door. But because of how much the Lord has shown me, I let them in the door. Because I'm, I'm not a baby Christian and I know the scriptures. So I let them in the door. And I, and I said, well, how do you get there's two Bibles? Your Bible and, and the King James. He said, oh, it's, it's, and he gave me the verse for it. I said, okay. I said, I'll tell you what. Let me study this verse. Come back in a couple of days. And if, it, if this verse means there's two Bibles, then I will accept your Book of Mormons. And they were all happy. They said, okay. And so I read it. I didn't get it that it means two Bibles. And then I went to a couple of men that I respect very highly, uh, their wisdom on the Word of God. And I didn't tell them what I was looking for. And none of them said that it meant two Bibles. So they did. They came back. They, got, they came in my house, sat down, and I told them, I said, well, you know, I really don't see where this means there's two Bibles. I said, can you explain to me how this means there's two Bibles? And them two guys looked at each other, didn't know what to say. Because this is what they were told, so they just believed it. We don't need to be like that. If you say something, you got to know why you're saying it. Have the Word of God behind you. Someone told them that and they just accepted it. And then when I said, well, how do you get that this means two Bibles? They couldn't answer me. We don't need to be like that. Make sure, the Lord plainly says, always be ready to give an answer. On whatever you believe, God said, always be ready to give an answer. And that's why we in here need to grow. So we can recognize those who have another gospel. John chapter 4 verse 23 but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. So in Matthew 2.11, it also says, And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with, his, with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And they had opened their treasures and presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is when 
Jesus was born. What did the what did they do? They fell down and worshipped the child. So, for, so from the birth, the Lord has shown that Jesus was God, because you only worship God. That's what Jesus said, right? God is the only one that you worship. And right here, these men fell down and worshipped baby Jesus. And in Matthew 9, verses 18 through 19, While he spoke these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hands on her, and she shall live. And Jesus rose and followed him, and so, and so did his disciples. So right here, I'm going to be showing you. They worshiped Jesus, and Jesus accepted it. Jesus accepted worship. Why? Because he's God. Matthew 20:20. 20, 20. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee, children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Now these all have stories, but I'm just showing you how these people worshiped Jesus, and he never turned them away. Matthew 28, 9. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hell. And they came and hold, held him by the feet and worshipped him. There's lots of scriptures that show that people worshipped Jesus. Matthew 28, 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Luke 24, 52. And they worshipped him. And returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Now this, I'm just pointing these out. That these people were worshiping Jesus. Okay. He was accepting worship. Hebrews 1.6 Again when he bringeth him the first begotten. Into the world he saith. And let all the angels of God. Let all the angels of God worship him. Speaking of Jesus. Now these are the people. These are the ones. These, in the New Testament. He was, Jesus was called God. And John 1.1, 1, 1, John, which we're, I read it already. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in John 1.14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So John right here is calling Jesus God, and the Word was God. In 1 Timothy 3.16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of the godliness. God was manifested in the flesh... Now back here it said the Word, which we know is Jesus. But right here in 1 Timothy 3.16, it plainly says it. God was made, was manifested in the flesh. How can you not take it that Jesus is, is not God? How can you? I mean, just plain verses like this. God was manifested in the flesh. The Word was God, and God was became flesh on verse 14. I mean, that's the two verses right there showing that God became flesh as Jesus. He was called God by the Apostle Thomas, John twenty twenty eight, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. This is Thomas talking to Jesus. He's called, he says, My Lord and my God. This is a disciple of God. He says, My Lord and my God. Hebrews 1, 8. But unto the Son, he saith, this is God speaking, unto his Son, Jesus, God says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. This is, this is God saying, Thy throne, O God, calling Jesus God. God was calling Jesus God here. And you'll find that in Hebrews 1.8. Now we're going to see in Acts 10, verses 25 and 26. Now this is Peter. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. And Peter took him up saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Men, men, men of God, let me put it this way, men of God do not accept worship. Peter right here is a man of God, a disciple. And this, this guy came and fell down and started to worship him. And what did Peter say? He stood him up and said, Hey, I'm just a man just like you. Don't worship me. Men do not worship men. There's only one you worship, and that's God. Period. Now, Paul had healed a man who was crippled since birth, and the people started to give Paul a lot of things for doing it. Paul, 
God told him to heal him, and, God, and Paul healed him. Paul didn't heal him, but God healed him through Paul. He laid hands on him. And in Acts 14, 15, when he did that, he said, Sirs, why do you do... Paul is saying, why, do you, why are you doing these things? You know, he's receiving things and they're worshiping him. We also are men of like passion with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the seas and all things therein. Again, Paul is saying, hey, do not worship me. Do not worship me. These are men of God. These were godly men. Paul, anybody who knows Paul, which he probably wrote half of the New Testament, is a man of God. And if any man should deserve worship, it would be him. But Paul is saying, hey, I'm a man just like you. So the Bible is teaching you do not worship men. People who worship a man and he allows it, I'm not going to say he's not a man of God, but he's not in God's will. He's not obeying God by receiving worship. Because the Bible plain says, you only worship the Lord thy God. Only. So do not worship a man, a woman, or things. There's some religions that don't believe in pictures. Because they think that's a form of worship. Well, Cynthia can have a picture of her son and her daughter-in-law right there. But she's not worshiping that. It's just a picture of them being married. But they got people out there that say if you put pictures on the wall, you worship it. That's a sign of worship.